Joining us now, Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you guys. So congratulations. Ju- Judge Emmett Sullivan gave you guys uh, a win uh, under a, F- a FOIA Act lawsuit that you filed regarding the employment of Huma Abedin as a uh, special government employee. Uh, bottom line, Hillary Clinton has to answer some questions within 30 days. These are under oath, and I believe, I guess, her responses are going to be written. That's right. Oh, please tell us about it. Well, we had been asking her questions for some time. We asked her some questions two years ago under oath uh, because of Judge Sullivan. And we also brought in some witnesses like her top aide, Yuma Abedin, and Cheryl Mills, another top official at the State Department, and top officials you don't know about, the nameless bureaucrats who enabled her. Uh, But Hillary Clinton answered a series of questions under oath. A lot of times she says, I don't recall. But there were a few questions she said I didn't want to answer because I object to them. They're outside the scope of discovery. You're not allowed to ask the questions. And the one key question she refused to ask that she said was outside the scope of discovery about her email system was describe the creation of the Clinton email system, including who decided to create it, the date it was decided, why, who set it up, and when it became operational. So that's a basic question about why her system was set up and who was behind it. For reasons I don't understand, she said that was beyond the scope, and the judge says, no, you have to answer the question within 30 days. The answer to that question seems crystal clear to everybody but Hillary Clinton, I guess, because it it seems like it was transparently designed to circumvent government records-keeping requirements because she would be in control of all of the data that would cross through her server, and then in the end, when they ended up turning over some amount of the data, they got to decide – her team got to decide, here's what we're giving the State Department, and then we'll just delete the rest. We don't have to turn over everything. Well, her top aide, Umabedin, testified she didn't want people reading her emails. I get to, no, surprise, surprise. And I, I'm convinced that what, she, what was going on was that if anyone's going to read them, they'd have to go through her lawyer to do so, David Kendall, who was also at the hearing last week. You know, one of the things about the hearing is there are eight lawyers on the other side and just Judicial Watch, uh, one Judicial Watch attorney. And I'm sitting there as corporate representative. I'm usually pretty unhelpful just sitting there uh, watching the events. But what was really outrageous is that we fought back, obviously, against David Kendall, Mrs. Clinton's lawyer. But you had the Justice Department attorney with her uh, supervisor sitting there on behalf of the State Department arguing that Hillary Clinton shouldn't have to answer these additional material, Wait, these additional questions. So the Justice Department, paid for by American taxpayers under the Trump administration, was arguing for Hillary Clinton. That's exactly right. That's exactly right, Mary. Wow. That's amazing to me. All right, so so now let me ask you, what happens if, again, her memory fails her, you know, because she's not, you know, there's these things happen and she's not, we're supposed to believe that she's, you know, she doesn't mean, you know, ill. It's just that she just doesn't remember a whole bunch of stuff and she just keeps saying, oh, I don't know, I didn't set it up. I have no idea why it was set up. And she just does plays that card again. Is that a dead end? Uh, No, because the judge in the end is going to evaluate her testimony and hopefully grant us the relief uh, our lawyers decide to seek. Uh, So to say you don't remember in an incredible way, uh, I think the the courts are going to see through that. And, you know, it's interesting. There was another official at the State Department, her IT aide, one of the IT people at the State Department, who I think knew what was going on but did nothing. Right. Uh, He testified to Congress, and it looks like he may have lied. Now, we had fought with him about testifying. He testified, took the Fifth Amendment because he said he had a credible fear of prosecution, and we said that's probably not fair uh, given the status of the the Clinton email investigation. And the court said, hold on a second. I look at the testimony. He may have lied to Congress. Uh, The prosecution for perjury, the statute of limitations, five years. So, yes... He's within that five-year period, and uh, we can't predict what's going to happen in the future, which is a useful reminder uh, that, however unlikely, prosecutions are still possible uh, for lying under oath in these matters. That's why, So is this the same IT you'd actually set up the server for her, do you know, in uh, Chappaqua? No, he was a State Department employee. Oh, so okay. he's someone who uh, – so what was going on in the back end, at least within the State Department, it looks like. Gotcha. So where Where is the hope that this goes? I, I, I don't have any hope whatsoever of seeing anything ever happen to Hillary Clinton, her ever being held accountable. I, I just don't have any hope of seeing that happen. Are Do you see that happening coming out of any of this? Or is this just going to be, you know, people in her circle who wind up being, you know, popped for perjury or something like that? Well, I think there's been some rough justice uh 
we didn't plan it this way because we didn't uh, involve ourselves in the election because that's not what we do. Uh, but if the American people were sitting on election jury as a grand jury, they certainly indicted. And she, one of the reasons she's not president, if not a key reason, is because of her shenanigans with this email scandal, with this email scheme. Uh, we'll see if there's further accountability. But that's a big question for the Justice Department. All we can do is what we can do in terms of getting the information out. Uh, but when we're facing a Justice Department defending her rather than prosecuting her, that's a challenge. And maybe there'll be a change with new leadership here. All right. Interesting. More with Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch coming up 643 on WMAL. And joining us now, Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch in studio to uh, make us a little bit smarter about everything that's going on. Uh, one of the things you also involved with this um, with this FOIA request was regarding Huma Abedin uh, as working as a special government employee so she could work outside uh, uh, elsewhere while working for the State Department at the same time. How does all of this play in? Well, that's an unusual arrangement generally. Uh, it's usually uh, special government employees are employees that the government uses in a special way. They have a special need. The job can't be done by anyone else. Uh, for instance, you may recall there was this uh, gentleman who was used to uh, manage the compensation of the victims of 9-11. I think he was given a dollar a year or something to do the work. And then he was, he was a private uh, practicing attorney. Hillary Clinton, I mean, Hillary Clinton didn't need Abedin, Yuma Abedin as a special government employee to do anything. He, she was just a political aide who helped her run the State Department. But she continued to do her job, which is illegal under the law, and uh, while working at, working at the Clinton Foundation and uh, working with one of the companies of the Clinton Foundation that was involved in all this special interest favor granting through the State Department and elsewhere, a controversial group. So uh, when they tell you that the Clinton Foundation had nothing to do with the State Department, well, in fact, they employed the same person at the same time, it looks like. Of course. I mean, look at over – Look, I mean, look at also the longtime confidant, hatchet man for Hillary Clinton, Sidney Blumenthal, a guy who the Obama White House refused to let Hillary Clinton hire in the State Department, said, no, you can't hire that guy. He cannot work for you. So what did he do? He works for her in quiet. That's and he's right. sending a lot he's, – he's getting – he's all over that email server – and he's sending information that the government now considers classified in his emails to her. So and he, he was he was basically a dark employee working for her. She didn't care, man. Any if if she wanted to do it, she did it. She found a way to do it every time. Well, not only that, but he also helped get the dossier through the State Department into the FBI Justice Department. Yeah. So Sidney Blumenthal, the Clinton Foundation, in many ways, had its fingerprints on the dossier. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, very quickly, in the time we have left, uh, we have uh, Bob Goodlatte, the uh, outgoing chair of the U.S. House Judici Judiciary Committee, said that he is planning to issue subpoenas to James Comey and Loretta Lynch. Uh, coming up uh, with uh, Comey in a closed door questioning on November 29th, Lynch on December 5th. Comey, of course, wants this to be televised for the American people to see under transparency. And Bob Goodlatte saying no. What are they looking for? I don't know, just to do something before they leave office, uh, because Goodlatte won't com control the committee uh, at the beginning of January of 2019. Uh, these are two people that should have been test should have testified a long time ago. Hillary Clinton's never been asked to testify about the Russia issue. Her lawyers at, uh, who helped fund the dossier through Fusion GPS. Uh, I don't understand why even Mueller hasn't been called to testify. So we'll see what they can get out of uh, Mueller and Lynch. And believe it or not, I, I share the concern that this testimony is in public because when it's behind closed doors, we rarely get to see all the information. Well, he did say that they would release transcripts to the public. So, well, we're still waiting on some other transcripts that have been uh, that they had that they haven't released yet. I'm still waiting on them, so wow. I, I just don't buy that. Oh, you're not making me happy this morning, Tom. <laughs> Six fifty on WMAL. We're here in studio being joined by Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch. Uh, Tom, the president says he's going to submit answers to the Mueller team this week, his written responses to questions on Russian collusion. That's what it's been limited to, no obstruction questions. As far as we know, that's what we keep hearing. So, what a waste, what a, what a waste of time. What is he going to be answering, answering questions on? There was no Russia collusion. Uh, this is harassment. I would suggest they're trying to trap him. 
Uh, look, the Justice Department is fighting us over asking one question of Hillary Clinton, a basic one about her Clinton emails, and they're harassing the president, the same Justice Department, with two dozen <laughs> questions on something everyone agrees didn't well, happen, even the Democrats have moved on from it. Well, you and I both know justice is only reserved for people who are in power. <laughs> we, we shouldn't go after Hillary Clinton anymore. She lost the election, Tom. That means, we right. don't, that means we're not allowed to focus on her anymore. <laughs> Well, you know, she seems to, still seems pretty powerful to me, and uh, the Justice Department, I think, is in this, I think, constitutionally crazy situation of harassing and targeting the President of the United States. Uh, if I were the President, I'd shut the whole thing down, and if Congress wants to investigate it, they're going to do it anyway. Let them ask all the questions that are blue in the face, and he can respond appropriately using the protections allowed to him as the president of the United now, I, States. I chalk this up to uh, a victory in the sense that you know, it was clear, you know, Donald, the president, has not gotten rid of the investigation. He could have done that a long time ago. So he made a decision at some point. You know, this is a political liability for me if I get rid of this thing. Right. So let's. I'm just going to focus on doing what I can to mitigate the damage of this Mueller investigation. Right. And Trump's legal team has been saying, we'll answer questions, but we'll only do it in the following way. Written format, and we'll only do it on collusion. And that seems to be what they got, Tom. Uh, it actually seems like a pretty big success for Trump's legal team, unless there's a subpoena coming on the obstruction stuff that Mueller's reportedly looking at. Unless they don't need his testimony on the material, what happened during the presidency, and they're going to go after him anyway, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, people close to him in the White House. I, I don't know what the Mueller investigation plans on doing, but given the partisan nature of the work, the abuses that we've seen uh, uh, previously with raiding Manafort's home with guns drawn in right. an early morning raid... You know, I would just presume the West, the worst, if I were the president and his team. Yeah, it just seems like they're going to go after everything they get is perjury, one charge of perjury. That's what they seem to be getting everyone on, and they seem to be uh, zeroing in on Randy Critico, and he said he's probably going to get popped for the perjury host, as well. Yeah. yeah, the radio host over the, dealing over the with Clinton Roger Stone oh, over the Clinton emails. Yeah. Yes, only some people will be prosecuted about the Clinton email. <laughs> yeah, not her though. Well, Tom Fitton, thank you so much. We appreciate the good work you do. Thanks for joining us.